If I could only say one thing about Hyrule Historia, it would be excellent. The binding, the cover, the gold on it, the information inside, everything about it is just a really nice quality. And I didn't honestly keep up on it before I decided to go ahead and order it. So when I got it in my hands, I was really surprised just how large it is and how nice of a quality it is. And it looks really nice on display and actually would make a really good coffee table book. You can kind of compare it in size to Skyward Sword here and just see, you know, how nice and how large this would look on a coffee table and how that would really work. Uh, originally, I had planned to order the leather, uh, faux leather, I think, actually brown with uh, the black embossing on it. And I just waited too long and I ended up getting the green cover. And when I got it, I was pleasantly surprised. I actually think in the end, this gold and green cover here would look much better on display than the brown wood ever would. Inside is a wealth of information on the Zelda franchise. I'm sure you know some of what is already in here, so I won't spend a lot of time going through each detail. They cover everything to some degree, except the CDI games, of course. There's artwork, sketches, notes, stories, the infamous timeline, letters from the creators, and even a short manga. It'll be a good lengthy read if you take it all in. The beginning of the book starts out covering Skyward Sword, using what is currently the earliest part of the Zelda story as the intro to the entire book. Of course it has to do with the fact that it's the most recent game, so it has the most information available, and it can connect to the widest audience. Seeing the original design ideas, the high quality artwork in one place, is nice even if you like the older games more. If nothing else, you'll like the notes on how each decision was made to try and tie the whole series together with just the art direction. It was surprising to see how many characters were covered, from Link all the way down to a person in a side quest you may not have even had much interaction with depending on how you played the game. Even sketches and design decisions on weapons and items are included. All the artwork, be it a full finished design or sketches, are transferred well to the book. After that it begins covering the other games in the series by doing an entire timeline of the history of Hyrule, first by presenting the singular timeline and then being a chronology of the entire story. I was honestly a bit surprised how it was all pieced together, not always going game by game. If a backstory from one game took place before another game in the history, that backstory was placed in its proper place in the book. The stories are labeled as when they took place or what era and from what game they originated from. Those are the labels sitting on the left of each page. On the right are tidbits to fill in the gaps. Reading through this timeline really made it obvious how some of these titles were made with little consideration to canon and history, but it's still interesting to see the effort in trying to connect each game. Even if you had looked at this official timeline online, don't feel like you have the entire story. Reading each story and how it ties together is still interesting. There's a lot of detail here, even though it doesn't seem like each of the past games are given as much attention as Skyward Sword. The stories are detailed and try to connect each game as best as possible. Even things like similar weapons, clothing design, and various other items are tied together, either due to legitimate design choice at the time or finding a way in the story now that works. Even though the timeline section is only a little over a quarter of the book, there's a lot of information here, even small things like how the language of Hyrule can be translated, which is pretty awesome. Lastly, the book shows development sketches from games in the series. Not too surprising, but I was surprised to find sketches of how the dungeons were made for the original Zelda on the NES. I actually never would have imagined that they were drawn out by hand on graph paper. Just like it was with Skyward Sword at the beginning, it was cool to see some of the other ideas that were given for each character in each game, sometimes being much more realistic or much more childish than what we got. There is even a section that shows the evolution of Link, Zelda, and Ganon, though Link by far got the most attention here. They barely touch on Ganon's demon forms at all. Better yet is a section after that which covers Zelda titles that have been released. Again, don't expect to read about the CDI games, but I was surprised to not see the Game & Watch Zelda title but they mentioned Link's crossbow training. There's even a small blurb about the Satellaview BS Zelda games and the ever-growing more rare Collector's Edition on GameCube. The bonus manga is a great read and tells the story of how the world of Skyward Sword came to be, which makes it the first story of Hyrule to date. The artwork for both the color parts and the black and white parts are amazing and on the high gloss paper it really pops. Great work was done here. 
When I pre-ordered Hyrule Historia, I got it for $19 from Amazon, and then shipping of course. Uh, they're currently selling it for $19.24, which to me is a really great deal, considering that the cover price, the retail price, is $34.99. So if you want it, now's the time to grab it, because you never know when it's going to level out and only be that retail price, and how long it's going to take people to really consider this a collector's item. It's not perfect, but any Nintendo collector, and especially Zelda fans, should be able to see the worth in having this around. He just thumb it through, or more than anything, just it's a really nice display piece. I'll see you next time.